Hello and welcome to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnought campaign. Today we're playing as the Austro-Hungarian Empire starting in 1910. So for this campaign, the objective number one is to make it to the end of the campaign. Number two is you don't get kicked off as admiral. Number three is to make sure that the country doesn't fall into revolution or having too high unrest. If any of these these three will not, any of these conditions are not met, the campaign will end, at least for, for this game. And the other thing to keep in mind is that the, for this campaign, I'm not running any mods, it's completely vanilla. Alright, so without further ado, I'm going to introduce to you the ships that I have designed for the fleet. It's, all right, so here is the battleship for this campaign that I've built for the start, the start of this campaign. Uh, so currently sitting at around 27,000 tons. It has uh, right, eight 13-inch Mark III guns as main armament and also, uh, as you can see, 12 8-inch guns in barbettes. I know I could have mounted on... Uh, Secondary guns and turrets on on the deck, but it's a little bit too heavy for what I wanted the build to be. So at least for this uh, configuration right now, there won't be any. I didn't mount any secondary guns and turrets. So basically, it's a very standard build, I guess. Uh, a turbine engine, electric steering, auxiliary shaft. Best, up. best things that I have available in terms of technology at the moment. And for the most part, I'm using TNT and Fast Type for basically to reduce my flash fire chance. I was reloading. I went with stereoscopic sights because Battleship generally, um, I would say, plays better at longer ranges. Not that. You know, currently, uh, let me see, one sec, right here. So these things uh, has a range of 26 kilometers for AP. And generally do quite well in terms of penetration. Uh, let's say 15 kilometers, at, it does 11.9 inches. Oh wait, currently this is... Uh, oh. It's 115. Whoops. Oh, have that. 115. My qualifier is a bit too high. Let's put. Uh, right, 115. Now let's see what it does in terms of that. Okay, that, that's better. So if I have to go through my own armor, my well, armor scheme right now it's about 18 inch belt. Yeah. And now I, I could thin out the belt and mount secondaries, but I, at least for this build, I prefer. So just that I, I think that casemates should be enough. And it's not likely to operate alone because I do have the ships in the fleet that can potentially deal with the smaller ships. I'll, I'll share in a bit. So at least for now, you know, big guns, it's 26 kilometer range. Uh, probably gonna hit stuff around uh 15. Mm -hmm. 15 kilometers, which would do about 14.3 inches of belt armor and about six, 6 inches of deck armor, which honestly is not bad. You can see here, it's pretty much the armor scheme and the rest of the technology. And it's good. the. I have no idea how to pronounce that name. So let's move on to the battle cruiser. 
Okay, so for the Battle Cruiser, it's basically about uh, at least for the philosophy of how I build the Battle Cruiser is that my Battle Cruisers would be the one with the firepower and the speed, like how Battle Cruiser is supposed to do. Uh, Battle Cruiser, basically, I'm sure you know, it's meant to outrun everything you can't outfight and outfight everything you can outrun. So, which means it'll be faster and also more heavy armor. Not armored, so the battleships are there to be the tank and basically the battleships are there to do the damage. So it'll do, so it's 30,000 tons, which oddly enough is a bit bigger anyway, but it, it'll do 30 knots, or cruise around, and, and I'll cruise at 17, so that's fine. Anyway, you know, pretty, pretty standard, and it's, it's as high tech as I can make it. Against stereoscopic sights, and as you can see, this thing also the same, and this thing has more secondary guns in case me, and one barbet right here just for the weight balance, actually, purely for the weight balance, and. No, extra secondary stem if you need if you don't mind the weight so that's basically it for now maybe hmm, I still haven't decided how many I want to build of them just yet but we'll see I'm gonna take that long to build either it's about 21 months versus 19 Okay, it's longer than the battleship. Okay, now let's move on to the heavy cruiser. All right, so for the heavy cruiser, all right, this is the design. Why I designed it this way is because this heavy cruiser is very much um, what I would, what most people would call a pocket battleship design. So as you can see here, it has uh, eight 11-inch guns. They are currently Mark III guns. And I've messed around with these, and actually Mark III, even up to Mark V, these 11-inch guns are very, very scary. Because they are like laser beams when they reach Mark Vs. So I personally think that a heavy cruiser. This design is a pretty solid design and it holds holds up well in terms of firepower because again these things although it's only doing 25 knots they're not terrible in terms of firepower because it has a lot of small secondary guns like a lot of five inch casemates and some and a couple five inch secondary turrets on each side and also a smattering of three inch guns because I can but either way this is a very stout design in my in my book and this is how I personally like to design heavy cruisers because I'm a big fan of pocket battleship so again mostly very high tech uh, high tech stuff, fast things, no depth charges, because basically for the submarines, I for the submarines, I a submarine threat, I should say, is that I will leave that role to the destroyers because they can mount depth charges and also anti mining. Uh, operations, uh, uh, anti-mining kits. So in that way, they at least have so some purpose. I'm not particularly big fan of 
lighter ships in this game. I mean, I don't really see the usefulness of them other than torpedoes, but then again, because torpedoes, at least in my experience, they are uh, they're kind of a menace for one. And the second thing is that at least they are a menace to me, but they're not necessarily a menace to the enemy, at least from my experience. So I don't tend to use torpedo much. Maybe it's because I don't use torpedo much, but anyway, I digress. So basically this thing has uh, 8 11 inch guns and a smattering of 5 inches uh, secondaries and 3 inches as well. Armor is about 7.5 inches main belt, 3 half and 3 half and 3 stun. And there's uh, not much in, in terms of armor, at least for now. But I think that this should at least be decent enough to serve as a battleship. In You see, this thing has pretty good range as well, it's about 22 kilometers, so I'm thinking maybe it would stand a chance at least um, to up to maybe 12, 15 kilometers. 12, 15 kilometers. Yeah, accuracy is not that great, not that far range, but I, I guess can kind of swing it. Anyway, let's move on to the smaller ships. Meteor class of light cruiser. Right, so here is the light cruiser that I've designed. Yes, there's a lot of funnels. There's a lot of efficiency I need to get it up to 30 knots. Keep it there. And it's very straightforward design. Again, I'm not a I'm personally not a big fan of torpedoes, so I don't. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I don't have torpedoes on my light cruisers. I do have depth charges on them. Uh, that's just a precaution, I guess, for submarines. Don't really lay mines with them, or even do anti mining operations. So uh, this thing is pretty much. Again, all as high tech as I can get away with on these. I have seven inch guns on them, six seven inch guns, single turret, and some flattering of two or three inch uh, secondary guns. In later we fit some. The, the secondary guns will probably go away. Same if the three inch will go away. And be same with just the seven inch guns. Which I think are fine. In terms of dealing with light cruisers and destroyers. And maybe even some heavy crew. At least from my experience, these these things could be very deadly. Just as is. Even without. Now let's move on to the torpedo stick. The Huzzah. Alright, so this is the Huzzah class destroyer. It does, it's about 750 tons, it can do 35 knots. Um, minimum bulkheads because. It's quite expensive to, in terms of weight, at least, to refit to fit destroyers with like maximum bulkheads, like usual. So I and and the fact that they are actually pretty cheap and pretty lightly armored. So if you get hit, you can sink anyway. So minimum bulkheads for destroyers. And again, just uh, pretty standard in terms of. Technology for, for the ship uh, basically when with capitalistic and stuff cap. That's my personal choice in terms of um, AP and HE shells. Again, all the best, best goodies. 
uh, increase the ammo. No, because I personally I think that you know, a destroyer needs uh, more torpedo ammo because I'm personally not against torpedoes in this game, but just I don't have very much faith in them. I would like to, so I try to do a torpedo, a decent torpedo build, and not just completely ignore it. Even in the a vanilla game, again, you know the best best stuff. I deliberately choose to use standard torpedo because uh, fast torpedo range is god awful. And we can see coincidence. Uh, Rangefinder, advanced radio, mine hunter, and depth charge. That's my answer. Best, best depth charge. Again, armor on the destroyer. Uh, not that much. Not a big problem. Okay, so for the battleship, I'm thinking I'm gonna build two of them. Or if we get away with four. See how many I can get away with. Or hopefully, uh, no, I'm not gonna build eight. That'd be silly. But I am gonna build. It's basically this could be one giant fleet. So I am going to build four battleships. All right, battle cruisers. I don't need that many battle cruisers. I would say I'm going to build two battle cruisers. Plus, I'm a big fan of heavy cruisers. I'm going to build uh, need to have at least. Mm, I would say. Okay, so basically the last campaign that I played, I have six battle cruisers in each task force, and I had four fleets. So I'm gonna say for this one, I'm just gonna keep it at six as well. Yeah, I'm gonna keep it at six. Uh, actually, now I'm gonna do eight. Uh, because uh, I have faith in my heavy cruisers doing well. And now for light cruisers. Again, light cruisers, I'm not a big fan of them. I'm just going to do... I did 8 for the... Um, I would say all light cruisers and uh, or destroyers, and it's gonna go with a few of them. I would say three, three is a good number. And submarines. Alright, basically the plan to defend my ports is with mines. So currently I have. One, two, three. Three ports. So my biggest port at the moment is Tula at 213,000 tons. Yeah. Slado is 185,000. And Taro is 109. Just a shy of 110. So as is, uh, yeah, sure. So one, two, three. Let's see what kind of submarines we can build. So because I basically just want to mine my ports with submarines, I can do six. So basically two in each port. So I'm gonna. Uh, Ula. Uh, 
Blato. Kataro. I'm going to start the campaign. Okay, so let's just see in terms of politics where we, where our standing is. Okay, I'm standing with the world. Oh, that's not good. Okay, basically we have 27 ships. And our relationship with Britain and France is at minus 75. Good. We're quite buddy-buddy with Germany. Well, who saw that coming? And our relationship with Russia is not great. Everyone else is eh, okay. But currently we have 7 provinces, 3 ports. Uh, technology is average, zero, zero, no press, uh, no naval prestige, fine, constitutional monarchy. Uh, our GDP currently is at uh, 181 billion, which is a lot bigger than in Spain, but then again, everyone's bigger than Spain. Anyway, 181 billion GDP is bigger than China, bigger than Japan. Bigger than Russia. Um, no one here is close to these. Anyway, it's fine. Uh -oh. Relationship, uh, just gonna keep keep an eye on it. Now, oh. I already set uh, set to building the bigger shipyards so that I can build more ships. Uh, second of all, okay, currently we have 3.3 billion in naval funds and ooh, minus 25 million spending. The first thing I would I am always gonna keep this at hundred percent to boost the GDP. For crew training I'll usually be the first thing that I'll knock down to about at least fifty percent. Because twenty five percent is just to maintain the uh your crew experience because it, if you don't see combat it's usually gonna stay at trained. But if you do, it's going to be uh, the veterans. Then if it's about below 50%, if I'm at 50% and it's still in the red, I'm going to cut down on the tech budget. At least that's how I, I plan on doing it. So currently, 25 million. So what if I put it at... 80%. Alright, so at 80%, we are net positive of 284,000. If I up this to, let's say 85, now that's 5.5 million. 82%. 81, 80, 80%. Thousand, that's fine. Research. Yeah, let's see what's the closest research that's coming up. Okay, for the moment, rangefinder, going to the three. This is the three is okay. But stereo three would be better for my capital ships. Okay, so let's just have a look. Alright, rangefinder is coming up in one month. Uh, everything else is 
for this, I am not going to be using any free priorities because if you use priority to boost your research, the one you're boosting will speed up, but everything else in your tech tree will slow down in terms of research. So overall, you're researching stuff slower. You should design like that kind of there. I'm gonna build anything else at the moment. Uh, now I'm gonna leave it as this. Anything as is. And we're gonna see what gonna happen next. But in order to see what happened next, unfortunately that's all the fun time. No. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this episode. So I hope you've enjoyed. Uh if you do, please if you have any thoughts about this first episode, you can just leave them out in the comments section down below and let me know. And if you do enjoy this episode, if you don't if you do you enjoy this episode, just give me a like and subscribe thank you all so much for watching and i hope to catch you all in the next episode see you around